Let's get started. My name is Sivaram, and I'll be running this. Why not this expand, is not working. Why not expand here? This it's is not working. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, they cannot hear you. So nothing is working? Oh, you, you cannot hear him. Okay, Other... It's not going to speak. No, no problem. Ah. Oh, okay, okay. All right. I will just try to speak louder then. That's it. All right. Huh? We can hear you on uh, on Zoom. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so you said okay. maybe. And that's all. That, yeah. All right. <laughs> Don't like this is working. Hi. So my name is Sivaram, and I'll be running this final session here in this room. This is the poster session flash talks, and that we'll be running in the order. So I guess everybody's lined up here. Uh, we initially started with uh, thinking that we'll give them everybody one to two minutes after two minutes, but it looks like we're running a little late, so we'll cut it down to one minute. So without any further delay, right, let's get started with the first one, which is uh, uh, from survey to ontology uh, and Lauren. Sure. I mean, who even needs slides at this point? Man, I'm just going to say that my poster is an open invitation to come and chat about survey ontology alignment. Um, oh, how do I say yeah, Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, here's some words about survey ontology alignment. It's really uh, not great at the moment, um, and I'm doing a lot by hand, so if you have a better method, please let's talk about it. Um, you can see this beautiful figure on my poster. <laughs> Yay! Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. And the next one is by Anuvar. Yes. So just like Lauren did, tell us why you want us to come to your poster. Okay. Oops, not the right one. Okay. All right, go. So, go. so uh, I'm developing a systematization for photoactive carcinoma that I mentioned before with my uh, presentation. So if you we use the BFO of first Examination use the first order logic, the script to develop to deal with the negation equation. And if you want to see the uh, <laughs> uh, our uh, listener or the predicate of further order logic, the clip file is see my my poster. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, the next one is on collaborative development by Wes. Sure. So um, I'm just going to talk about uh, the posters about a collaborative development that Merck did with the um, Oliver's group here at the University of Minnesota to develop a process chemistry uh, domain ontology. Um, uh, you know, it's no surprise that when Oliver looked at it, he suggested we build an OBO ontology, which we did. So we'll talk a little bit about how we followed the OBO rules. Um, and if you go to the last slide, um, we'll just talk a little bit about how we got engagement um, within our site for the uh, SMEs within Merck, but also at other companies, and um, how we, you know, use this leverage the University of Michigan to provide ontology opportunities. All right, thank you, Wes. Carl um, is going to talk about NIDM experiment. Just go over to the first, yep. first slide. So the first slide is a little bit of motivation. I like the um, first slide. Um, the uh, yeah. Yeah. these are actual folders. Um, that my data management group is, uh, works with sometimes. Um, we build data management systems for uh, large scale studies, uh, mostly neuroimaging, but a lot of uh, neuroscience, um, other kinds of data. And we uh, have to deal with things that could be uh, sorted out uh, by using intelligence. So, I, um, so NIDM basically collects a lot of terms for cutting edge uh, imaging experiments, plus um, a lot of the basic things that people do in multi modality studies like um, surveys and um, uh, other types of data. So we talk about it All right, thank you, Carl. All right. So the next talk is going to be on shaping the semantics of healthy, sustainable food systems. Exactly. Um, hi, everybody. So my poster is about actually um, speaking up also from a framework that speak a uh, determinant that you need for uh, improving the food system in a healthier and more sustainable uh, way. Uh, this is also just the meta framework and meta participant approach for creating a shared uh, semantics for supporting the creation of solution um, for, uh, for um, actors of the system. So this is very, very briefly. Um, so thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. All right. So the next topic is going to be by Sarah. Sarah. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Longi and I'm a student from Singapore University of Science and Technology. Uh, so the talk is about uh, ontological analysis of collection and bridge the classification of cardinality phenotypes. And uh, basically, um, what we we know that phenotypes are, are important and we know that, uh, as discussed previously, that there are some potentially incorrect inferences that appear in uh, phenotype ontologies that are used. So here I just give you one example of um, um, of, of these uh, inferences. Uh, for example, this class, the a decreased number of T cells is inferred to be a decreased number of, of lymphocytes. And uh, as you might know, the lymphocyte is, is just a, a big class of, of some uh, types of, uh, of, of cells, like T cells, B cells, uh, I mean, plasma cells, and other types of cells. And the decreased number of, of the subtype does not necessarily um, infer the decreased number. The other example, maybe is more obvious, is um, when we talk about uh, Sarah. Sarah has ten slides. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. So okay. More obvious is when we have absence of, of the subclass um, is inferred to be the absence of the, the 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 superclass, and this is not right. And perhaps we want the other way around. Um, uh, to be uh, inferred, and I show the the the, um, the problem and how we fix it um, in uh, in um, NP and HPS uh, uh, at least. And uh, if you're interested about the method, please come to my talk. All right, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> All right, so the next talk is going to be on enhancing childhood nutrition. Jonathan, I've just got the one slide for this. So. Um, All right. Zoom out. So this is a out. this is a project yeah. primarily at the Arkansas Children's Nutrition Center. We have a large amount of longitudinal data. Six hundred patients who were infants when they started. They were broken up into diet groups, pinched and measured in all different ways, including uh, cognitive assessments, for which we're collaborating with the neuropsychological testing ontology folks. And you know the data is in in tables and they're hard to interpret and so we're building explicit representations of ontologies instead you should come with the poster all right thank you john i think we're doing really good let's keep it going now i'm going to do this one. Oh, you're doing that yeah. all right so you're doing the radiation therapy ontology yeah all right also just one slide Okay, well, I won't be standing in front of this poster. I'll be next to it. Andre Decker, there will be uh, manning the poster. It's about our effort to build an ontology for radiation therapy. Um, so, we've got some examples of the hierarchies and some definitions there. Um, this has been a fun project for me. I didn't know much about radiation therapy coming into it. The rest of the people here did know about it. And we've had some fun discussions about, like, what is the modality? What is a dose? And it turns out those things don't exist. So, <laughs> thank you, John. All right. Uh, the next talk is going to be by Emily. All right. Thank you, Emily. I'm Emily. I'm from the Clinical Path Institute, and my poster is on building an application on ontology and monograph for very few data. So the Critical Path is a nonprofit public partnership partnership with the MPA, and um, one of our projects is the RDC Gap, or the Very Few Physics Letter Data and Analytics Platform. And it's an FDA funded initiative with the goal of accelerating um, uh, developing therapies for rare diseases. And uh, the RBC gap houses uh, patient data from various sources, including um, clinical trials, sample history studies, and registry data um, for a multiple rare diseases. Next slide. Right. So, um, to build the ontology where um, the global boundaries and risk controls, reporting terms from various OBO ontologies, including HPO, Mondo, NASO, OBO, and Ron. Um, and the goal is to add a semantic layer to the data we have in the RSA gap. And then we're building an knowledge graph that could include T font for the acronym for our ontology uh, T font. And it also includes the HPO, HPOA, D2, synthetic mappings, modern or synthetic mappings, and a synthetic version of a large HPO. All right. Thank you, Emily. All right. So the next one is going to be by Morgan. All right. 
it's going to be on protein confirmation ontology. All right. Uh, so we've been working to develop the protein confirmation ontology, and we're kind of focused on the confirmation and spatial arrangements that proteins take on the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary levels. Next one. Yeah. All right. So um, proteins can change based on their environmental conditions, whether that be like pathogenic and like a neurological disease, or it be just a normal function like the sodium channel. You can see it on the next slide. This is a, a good model of a protein that changes conformation a lot um, because it, it changes on the secondary level all the way up to within the protein domains and it's constantly changing. Um, so it's interesting to model it and see the different uh, conformations it takes on. Okay. All right. So the next one is by Gita. All right. It's all right, off you go. And they're studying the anthologically represented and analyzed molecular interactions related to COVID 19 associated acute kidney injury. We utilize federal data sets, including ASCT plus B and Biovid, and we uh, expose our data uh, by markers into the XM pathway analysis, and we finally input our data into SIO. Okay. Um, the table on the left shows the whole data set that we extracted from BioGrid, and on the right, we can see the actually outcome pathway analysis. And this is a screenshot of some of the interactions that we can put or newly added into SIDO. We're glad we can talk about the details in the first session. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So the next talk is by Yuki. Yeah. Yuki, are you online? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. So uh, yes, you can talk uh, now. Yes, today I'd like to talk about cellular senescence. Next slide, please. Uh, next, next slide, please. And yep. my interest is can we regulate aging? Aging has already begun from birth. And uh, uh, sometimes senescence plays both inhibitor and inducer in cancer. So uh, what mechanism underlie aging? So we develop homeostasis imbalance process ontology. And objectives are to systematize knowledge and developing ontology. And first challenge is cope with granularities from cell to disease. And next, uh, next please. Okay. Yes. Second challenge is to clarify commonalities. Uh, we described homeostasis imbalance and transient senescence benefits in the embryo and suppress tumors in a On the other hand, sustained senescence has tumor genesis. And the third challenge is inference. Using hope shows possible causes and paths linked to diabetes. Uh, type 2 diabetes and chronic cellular senescence, which may find new mechanisms. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Yuki. Yes. Hey, the next talk is going to be on Obo Academy. No. Yeah. Are you? Okay, Obo Academy by Nicole. Hi, uh, so I'll be talking about the Obo Academy. These are open, um, online, freely available resources that we developed um, that our training materials for you by oncologists. Like you attended the OVO tutorial yesterday, we were using these materials as our foundation for the course yesterday. And Chris also mentioned that in a keynote, so thank you for that acknowledgement. Um, yeah, so I have a poster that just tells you about the content that we have in the OVO Academy. So come by and um, hear more about it. And we really hope that you use our resources. They are open and freely available and really intended to be a community resource that are um, for the community and developed by our community. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. All right, so the next one is going to be on the ontology of adverse events by yes. Oliver. Yes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah it's a hardy, hardy, uh, hardy shark, yeah, or channel chance work. So uh, he was a uh, visiting PhD student in my lab for two years, and then he left my lab, so I went back to China, and eventually become a professor. He's not an associate professor now. So I said, oh, you know, like uh, your work on, on, on on top of adverse events, it's great, but uh, we don't have good coverage, right? Like before, we only have more than 3,000 funds. And then he said, no problem. I'm going to hire one student. And we just say, we are 
all the turns, but now he had he has uh, one maximum. It's like one year working days and night, and now we have more than ten thousand turns uh, in OAE. So we're trying to put it into some good use later. So that's why if you want to be here, go back to the poster. I'll be there. All right. Thank you, Oliver. And the next one is going to be by Sam on occupation ontology. Our project uh, to develop an occupation ontology arose from a simple question. Why should the semantic web have poor semantics? The semantic web resource that generated this question is Wikidata, and specifically the way it represents and classifies occupations. We asked what would an occupation ontology based on OVO foundry principles look like? Our poster describes the process the steps we took to develop an occupation ontology with the acronym OCCO, OCO. Slide two. Wikidata classifies a pharmacist using two properties, instance of and subclass of. Two paths to the top hierarchy are formed and each path has multiple branches and some branches are incomplete. They are unsatisfied classes, according to the prior uh, uh, presentation. To what ontological system does a second order class belong? I feel that Wikidata needs an ontological overhaul. Our number three, our alpha stage development shows the use of OBO uh, principles and VFO are entirely suitable for this purpose. The, the entities in OCCO are in tie into existing BFO entities, we distinguish between the occupation holder, the person who is a pharmacist, and the occupation role, which is a BFO role. Object properties of ability and skill are associated with the occupation holder. We solicit your support for further development of those OCO. To be successful, it would need to have the support of an existing standards organization. Also, if you want, can we encourage the Wikidata stakeholders to take, to take an interest in it and use it? This question, along with this week's theme of Michigan Week of Ontology and Semantic Web, inspires the following idea. Why not advocate the integration of OBO Foundry ontologies into Wikidata? Let us make sure that the semantic web will benefit from the excellent work being done by the world's community of ontology. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. The, the next one is ontology integration for discovering bioresources. Uh, Tatsuya, are you online? Yes. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. You can uh, start. I'm Tats okay. I'm Tatsuya Kushida. I'm a researcher from Reken Bioresource Research Center, or BRC. Or oh, BRC is uh, one of the largest and comprehensive bioresource centers. It provides uh, different types of bioresources, such as experimental animals, cell materials, and DNA materials. One of our mission is to contribute to developing human health and medical science research through the Riken bioresources. Our core competence is to simultaneously provide different types of bioresources. So we might information on the bioresources by using semantic web technology. Next slide, please. I integrate, uh, we integrate to recon bioresource aggregate data uh, with the external data set, such as mass genome, also log, and uh, gene disease association and disease ontology, such as human disease ontology, Mondo and Ordo. As a result, uh, we uh, as a result uh, we we could link uh, twenty six thousand Riken bioresources to five hundred these terms uh, through the integrated algorithm data. Next slide, please. This slide shows the uh, uh, re relationships among the Riken mice cells and. Uh, DNA materials relevant to the disease, such as aminotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS. It indicates that the users uh, can uh, that the users uh, uh, can 
simultaneously uh, simultaneously uh, uh, find uh, the leaking bioresources and uh, uh, cells and materials, uh, DNA materials uh, relevant to the disease uh, by retrieving the uh, integrated RDF graph. Thank you for listening. All right. Thank you, Patsuya. Okay, hey, next one is by James Overton on OntoDev. Yeah, that's me, James Overton. I build lots of tools, and uh, this diagram shows a whole bunch of tools. So Robot is over there on the right, and you might recognize that one. But there's a bunch of other small tools that I've been building to connect together your like, TSV stuff and your stuff in Excel and spreadsheets, RDF and L, connect that all together and make nice workflows into GitHub. And they're all open source and layered and orthogonal. You can use them together, you can use them individually. Yeah, next slide, please. Uh, and so the key thing that is like my vision of how we should be developing ontologies is these kinds of web interfaces. And on the one hand, we have like uh, ontology and rich tables that we're gonna be editing. Tables are easy to think about, easy to edit. And then the next slide, and then we have trees on the other side and we're moving back and forth between them. And the red arrow is pointing to like a little button that is gonna take you from hamsters back to your import table where you're defining what you're gonna import and then you're gonna rebuild your tree and, uh, and it's all gonna be connected together, moving back and forth between these table representations and tree representations. So if you come to my poster, I will like balance my iPad and I will try to give you a demo. And if that doesn't work, I'll give you a demo tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so come, come see it. Thank you. All right, thank you, James. We have a couple more. Uh, the next one is going to be by Raul. Henry, yes. are, you, are you online? Yes, hello. yes no. I'm, I'm here. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you. You can start. Can you see the slide? Yes, I see it. Thank you. So the ontology for Avida, onto Avida, aims to develop an integrated vocabulary for the description of Avida, the most widely used computational approach for performing experimental evolution using digital organisms. The problem is that the lack of a clearly defined vocabulary makes some biologists feel reluctant to embrace the field of digital evolution. Next slide, please. We used, uh, we used uh, robot commands to automatize the process of developing onto Avida. Next, uh, we described this process step by step Instead of creating new terms, we identified those that can be reused from existing ontologies as Ontovida is intended to be part of an interoperable ecosystem. We integrate new terms proposed by contributors by using robot command template to be converted into OWL modules. Those template modules are those imported and merged with the core ontology. The logical consistency of the ontology is checked by using the robot commands, reason, reduce, and annotate. Next slide, please. How, how, an, universe, how an universal development, developmental property of phenotypes such as plasticity can be reported by using the containers of in, in onto Avida. The ontology for, for Avida, onto Avida provides semantics for Avida DB, a database that stores genomes, transcriptions, and phenotypes of more than a million digital organisms. Uh, as a summary, onto Avida will allow researchers to make inferences, um, example, for instance, regarding phenotype uh, plasticity based on certain rules and constraints. It facilitates the reproducibility of in silico evolution experiments described in the scientific literature, and it verifies the origin of the stored provenance data in Avida database. The Ontovida team is expected to receive community feedback on a continual basis through individual new requests, requests for definition, synonym, or term updates. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. The next last talk is by us. Yeah. I only, first of all, I 
first two slides okay. and then show the last. All right, so the background of this, I do a literature review on how I'm trying to support AI and machine learning because I really, I worked very hard in the agency, first at, at the ENR and the age to try to get funding for ontology related work. So can you go next? So I want to acknowledge this work because uh, research is not my assignment. And I got a group of high school to help me. And uh, unfortunately, fortunately, I have, I'm in the NIH data scholar program. So I got two other data scholars support. And what I find from the literature is very interesting, in, including the, how the trend is going, who, what kind of biology was used the most, and uh, how the researchers connected it with, with each other. Actually, we're not connecting with each other at all. Uh, I found out Rob is a hub, but his hub is very little uh, niche in uh, Saudi and UK. So please go to my post and see those figures. It's really interesting to see. And my uh, other uh, findings, findings are already talked by Rob and he gave more technical details. Basically, can you go to last? Oh, no. Can you go? Yes. So here, I want to say that after all this investigation and the workshop and the conference, we really need to do more Robbie workshop and we need to connect, communicate, uh, collaborate and generate ideas so that we can build a community and solve the pro real problems. And last, please. This is, I want to say, let a thousand flowers bloom in this area. Over. Thank you, Asya. Thank you. Laura, is she online? Okay, the next poster is by Lauren. Lauren, are you online? Hi, yes, I am. Yes, we can hear so you. I know everybody wants to start their poster session. So I am not there in person, so I'm just projecting my poster onto the screen. Um, so my name is Lauren Wishney. Um, I'm a PhD student of Dr. Gales um, at UB. Um, so this is, a, there's a lot on this poster. I will not try to cover everything on this poster. Um, it is on the website if you guys want to go and look at it. Um, but essentially my question uh, with this research is how can we take these components of uh, the field of biomedical ontology, uh, the construction um, of ontologies, uh, bio curation, um, mapping of data to ontologies, uh, and finally, actually implementing uh, those ontologies and knowledge bases and other um, artifacts. So um, anytime we are implementing a living database, whether it's an EHR um, or in our case, um, an Alzheimer's disease database known as the ADNI, the Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging database, um, we need to consider how we are going to track changes because these these data sets inevitably evolve they change uh things that were once true uh become no longer true uh and things that were not true before become true we need to be able to keep track of those kinds of problems um so i'm sure you all are familiar with Werner coosters uh his work gets cited a lot at this conference um so uh essentially he has come up with this idea of referent tracking. Um, referent tracking is a paradigm um, for keeping track of changes in databases uh, by giving every particular that is referred to um, an individual unique ID, which he calls an RUI, a reference unique identifier. Um, so essentially, to implement referent tracking properly, you need uh, a realism-based ontology, which we created. We created uh, an ontology based on the ADNI data um, you can see I have this process uh, displayed in a figure, but and it looks very, very stepwise and very linear. But any of you who have ever done this kind of work uh, know that it's not a linear process. Uh, you, we are continuously curating um, for the ontology. We're continuously creating mappings between the ADNI data and the ontology, uh, and at the same time, in parallel, working on implementing this referent tracking system, um, which. You'll see over there on the right, 
um, as just an example of the data structure uh, that's at the core of the algorithm that creates a referent tracking system. So if you're interested in how uh, you might want to implement referent tracking or um, how you know you might take what I've done here and apply it in a different setting, like an EHR setting, um, please look at my poster, email me. Um, I think referent tracking is neat because it's flexible enough um, that that you can you can adapt it to several different data tracking situations. So um, email me, ask me questions, or uh, yeah, get in touch if you want to collaborate. So thank you. Thank you, Lauren. We have one more poster. Is anybody from this poster available online? Or in the room. Or in the room. Okay, if not, we will end this session. Couple of comments. Uh, first one is let's give all the poster authors a round of applause. And, and then after this, we will be moving in next door where the posters are all there. And, yes. And then after the poster session, we have dinner at the park. So the, okay, so this is a very important announcement, right? So I better you make sure that everybody hears this. So. Uh, is this working? Okay, so we'll move into the next room, which has all the posters, and then following that, we have dinner organized at the park. Uh, so the address for the park is here. Um, so it's the so it's the Island Park Shelter, and you can see the address here: one four two zero Island Drive. It's very uh, close by and if you choose to walk it's about a mile and there may be a few cars that okay. may be going yeah. if you want to catch a ride so with that uh, oliver well, you have something right yeah last okay. thing is to get the, the party time right so uh yeah before somebody i want to use this chair before i have sleep better. So yeah, they're right. Thank you. So uh, yeah, it's really fun. I, I I really feel like after so many months of hard work that we have everyone here, we built up everyone. So first of all, I would like to really think of all the co-organizers, like uh, including Alex, Bill, like uh, Asia, uh, yeah, Stephen. They have done tons of work. I feel like oh, yeah, I'm more like a there's one person in, in Michigan and uh, and Barry said, Oh, we want to have a we want to have a meeting. Said, oh, why not? It's my owner. But you feel like you don't have much help, right? But uh, actually, then I found oh I got so much help. So really I like to thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you for helping uh Asia. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. Yeah. Okay, so the secretary, I would like to uh, thank all the co all the organizers of, of the workshop like that. It's hilarious. Okay, I know we have uh, each of the workshop actually probably as many many organizers. We quite know the open forward to each of but for those who are in here, definitely I'd like to give each of you a uh, sound team. Let me start from you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have been working hard for one one full day, right? But hopefully, you will be good for us. Something interesting. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your financial. Well, you know, uh, well, then you are. You I know. already have a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are. Can you say you have several things from the front, right? But I'm going to say this one. We, we, we don't duplicate. So you have multiple multiple uh, functions, then we give you one. Okay. Okay. So let me do the second one. Okay. So uh okay. Co-organizers. Uh I know Nico is one, right? Nico? 
Yeah, this is uh, uh yeah I could say something about this. Yeah, you can only have one. I know you can use the word smaller, but uh so this is uh US N 